Hey everyone, I am finally back to the Hot Rod Barbecue. I was gone for about five episodes, five weeks if you will. Um, doing a little road trip for a special cause. You see, we actually just filmed a big series for Hemmings, or an upcoming series for Hemmings called Road to Improvement, which is going to be on our new uh, YouTube channel. It's coming up towards the, the latter half of this year. It was myself and you know, journalist extraordinaire Alana Schur. And what we did was we took this great 1981 Chevrolet Suburban and we drove it all across the United States. And as we drove it, we upgraded it. We did things like fuel injection, a transmission, interior, air conditioning, heads and a whole bunch of fun stuff to this thing. And we did it kind of in real time over a three-week period. So um, Alana is joining us on this show. We're going to kind of rehash the experience that we had with the truck that we aptly named Big Green because... Well, it's big and it's green, so, you know, no mystery there. Um, but, obviously, before we do that, I have to choose that car. I have to choose that car for our very special guest from our classified section, our online classified section, of which we have twenty five to 30,000 vehicles on Hemmings.com at any given time. We also have our amazing auction, well, that you could go and just bid on your favorite car or truck. Go over there, check it out, because there's some amazing stuff on there. Now, the car in question for Alana, because I know she loves it, is none other than a Dodge Viper. Alana has been a fan of the Dodge Viper for a million years. She, you know, she had a press one a long time, one of a very famous picture done by Larry Chen of Alana literally sleeping on the wing of this car, which is pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, 2008 Dodge Viper two door, the one that I've chosen right now has only got a paltry 12,000 miles on it, which basically means it's brand new and it'll last anybody who buys it for at least another 150 years or so. I'm just throwing that out there, but I think that's reasonable. Um, but anyway, there you go. Dodge Viper for Alana. Check it out in our classifieds. Go to our auctions. Check it out. And we'll be back in a few seconds with Alana Sher. Hey, everyone. How you doing? We are back on the Hot Rod Barbecue Podcast with Alana Sher. Alana, how are you doing today? I'm great. I'm sitting out in the sun. It's a lovely day. I know. You're, everybody's background is so much better than mine. Like, I got to... I got to maybe put some color up or do something. This is even <laughs> kind of depressing me. This is not good. Um, but yeah, like I wanted to, I wanted to get you back on the podcast because as some of you know, if you followed along with myself and Alana over the last, I'm going to say month, um, we had taken a very long uh, road trip in a 1981 Suburban that we are filmed or that we filmed for a new show for Hemmings called uh, Road to Improvement. So we've been back a couple of weeks and I wanted to say, how are you feeling? Do you feel better? Are you recouped? Yeah. Well, it's funny. I mean, anyone who's ever been on a road trip really of any size is going to kind of know that it's like at the very end of it, you get a little homesick. You kind of miss your bed and your yeah. kitchen, your bathroom, that kind of thing. And then you get home and you almost immediately want to like go back out again. Like, and that's <laughs> sort of how I felt like I got home it's really nice to get home. And then I was like, wait, but today I'm not driving 300 miles. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I like that. I miss driving 300 miles. So um, it's uh it's kind of addictive. I think road tripping. Yeah, no, I, it, it was, it was so much fun. I had such a wonderful time, but, but before we get into that, I want to throw out a big congratulations because for those that don't know, Alana is now working full time for car and driver. And it is something right that here. is, Yeah. Yeah, that is something that is so well deserved. <laughs> so happy for. So ex talk about what you're going to be doing over there. What is your position over there? <laughs> um, I'm just so excited to be considered an employable human being. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you like uh, I've been freelance for, for a long time now and it was fun. I got to do a ton of rad stuff and I was busy all the way through. And uh, Car and Driver came and they said I'd already been doing stuff for them. I had a column at Car and Driver for the past mm -hmm. year. And I'd been working, that's an airplane, if you can hear it, there's going to be some more of those. Um, I, so I had a column, uh, and then I'd been doing features for them and reviews, and, and I'd done mm -hmm. a comparison. And they came back to me and they said, would you want to be on staff? And I was like, wait, me? <laughs> you know, like it just, <laughs> I mean, because, you know, and you know this, like when I first started out writing about cars for Hot Rod, like one of the first letters I ever got was, a man who told me to go back to women's day. He said like, I was an escapee from women's day and that women nice. couldn't write about cars. And I just, I wonder where he is. And I hope that he sees my name in car and driver. I hope he does too. And I hope somewhere out there, we're all giving that person the, the subtle air middle finger. So, because <laughs> that's just not okay. But Alana, congratulations. 
knowing you for as long as I have, knowing the freelance life, and then coming into an organization. So, so, so proud of you. And Car and Driver are just way lucky to have you. So, Aww. well done. Well, well thank done. you. Thank you. I, um, I am excited about it. It's a great team. I'm looking forward to working with them. Um, and hopefully they'll let me do some road trips with you again, because that was super fun. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was the whole thing. You know, when, when we first kind of came up with this concept, it was, we had tried to think of something that um, kind of had never been done. And we talked about build shows that have been done, right? You see, you see vehicles that are built in a week. And then you never see or hear from them again. You never get to experience the parts that were put into them. You never get to see if they actually work or not. So this was a little different. So when I called Alana, I was just kind of like, I prefaced it. I was like, do you want to go on like a 3,500 mile road trip in an untested vehicle and then install parts along the way? And I think most people would have just been like, uh, I don't know. And Alana <laughs> was just like, oh yeah, no, I'm totally into that. <laughs> Uh, yeah I, well yes uh also i think that it's important that you said you uh include the fact that you called and you said alana do you want to go on a 3500 mile road trip over three weeks where we install parts on a vehicle leaving in two weeks yes that's, <laughs> that's true <laughs> yeah there was a little time crunch on that that's true yeah. but no i was so into it because first of all i thought it was a really good idea um i mean everybody likes a, a parts show, an install show, uh, people like before and after improvements. And there hadn't really been a show where it showed like experts explaining what was going to happen to the car. And then, you know, regular schmoes using the parts afterwards. I feel like those right. were, you know, there, there are things, there are shows out there that do one or the other. There yeah. are shows where, you know, where people kind of get down and dirty and, and like do it all themselves. I love yep. all of it, but I did, I hadn't seen what you had uh, suggested that we do. And I was like, this is a great idea. You know, this is going to be really fun. And, uh, and it was really fun because it, I mean, they could have gone so badly. Like we yeah. could have just, <laughs> we could have like never made it to the first stop or we could have had just a disaster at the first install and, and yeah. not been able to continue on. So we did get lucky. But it really did work, too. It was like everything that we did to the truck uh, made a difference in how it felt to road trip it uh, in that next section. And um, yeah. I mean, I would say that those were were improvements, that it, it was better to road trip it after the things. Mm -hmm. But even, you know, even if you're kind of a purist, if you like things to be really stock, it, it, it was interesting to see the difference. It really gave me an appreciation um, for what the new, like how good the new technology is, but yeah. also like what's fun about the original stuff. Like for example, mm -hmm. the new five speed that we put in the truck made it so much better to drive, right? Like we had more yeah. RPM and it was way easier to shift. I mean, you mm -hmm. never like missed a shift after that. It was like this nice, nice right. tight pattern, good clutch, but there was some fun to the like soup stirring, mystery <laughs> of the yeah. of the original transmission and you kind of uh, got this idea like oh yeah you know like there's like if you did want to keep it stock that's enjoyable in its own way like yeah i don't know i, I, well, don't I, think, know you, I think you i think you equated it to stirring a pot of gravy at one point <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what you said because the original four speed in there it's true. Like the shifts were just like, you were like one, two. Three. I mean, it was just, it was, <laughs> it was so long, the throws. And then we got the new transmission and the old transmission. It was like, it was almost like a game. It was like, all right, hunt for the gear. Like, can you find the gear? And will it go in where the new one, you were just like, click, 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 click. And it was, <laughs> it was easy. Um, but it was, so yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Kind of seeing how the improvements went along, I think was a lot of fun. But, and I do think that we got lucky because we really did take and I, I hope that people believe this a truly <laughs> untested vehicle and we rolled it i mean by the time i got home it was almost 36 or 3700 miles it was crazy yeah and crazy. um and we didn't cheat like we never cheated we never put it on a trailer um we never had no. anybody come out and get us um to like mm -hmm. get us back on the road during the the few problems that we had um and uh and we never went in any other vehicle. I mean, neither one of us. We we spent no. the entire every single mile was was 
you and me in that truck. So yeah, <laughs> it was, and it was, you know, it was interesting. Like we thought back and when we, when we shot this whole thing, it was, it's not like we had a big product production crew. It was, it was myself and it was Alana and it was Jeff who was our paramedic. And then Nick and Jen, who are our camera guys. And it was, you know, and they were following us in a, in a rented chase van. And thank God we had this big, massive suburban because that kind of served as our pack mule for not only old parts, but stuff we kind of accumulated along the way and equipment and luggage and stuff like that. So like, if we do this again, we have to, we need to, we need to consider that. It's <laughs> like, we're not shoving all that stuff in a Camaro or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, actually, I mean, it was brilliant to do this with an 81 Suburban because uh, it was so useful. In fact, I think there was one install that was taking a long time and every, it had been an early morning and it was like, we all just took turns napping in the backseat of the Suburban <laughs> and like truly napping. Like you can actually sleep in there, not a problem. Uh, you definitely mm -hmm. couldn't do that in, yeah, like a second gen F body or something like that. No. Not, not at all. Um, but the other part was, and you know, Alana's great because, like, I'm, I'm good at going from point A to point B. Alana is going from point A to point B, but finding point A <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, and eight, and nine, and ten, and then you get to point B, and that's what I'm terrible at. She should be like, we'd be driving along, she'd be like, we should go see this. This is the world's biggest knife, and this is the world's <laughs> like, you know, whatever. And it was so much fun because. And I think that that's such a, a wonderful thing when you when you have somebody that is like you need to turn off the beaten path. You need to go here and you need to go there. And and you know when you when you do a show, you do have to make it to the next leg eventually. But having someone point out like, listen, just relax. Let's go to this thing. It's cool. You'll never see these people. You'll never see this thing otherwise. Was such a it was it was really such a great thing. I'm so excited for everybody to just kind of <laughs> see this when it when it comes along. And like I've already seen kind of a preliminary cut of the first episode. It looks great. It's gonna be so much fun. Oh my god, I can't I really can't wait to see it. I can't wait to like relive it again. You are a very good sport too about uh all of my all of my um diversions because uh you know I mean you you sort of gotta relax into it, right? Like you, you never can be quite sure how good it's going to be. Like you just find some weird thing on online or you've heard about it and you're like, mm -hmm. well, it could be amazing or it could be just like a super big disappointment that we went, <laughs> you know, 17 miles out of our way for, but you know, you only live once. Oh, there were, there were some great ones. And I mean, y'all are, we'll see this later, but like a lot of found the world's and this is not a joke, the world's biggest Bowie knife. Like, you know, Crocodile Dundee, like big ass Bowie knife. Alana's like, oh, I found the world's biggest Bowie knife. And it just happens to reside in a place called Bowie, Texas. <laughs> and like, like you, you think about it and you're like, I guess that makes sense. Right. And so we went there and we saw the world's biggest knife and it was there and it was a big steel blade. And we went, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so it was just like the little things like that really kind of made the trip. I think if, if you had a, what was your least favorite part? What was your least favorite thing? Um, I mean, I didn't have, there were, there were no miseries. Um, I mean, you know, I'm not a morning person, uh, and we had some early mornings <laughs> just because we had a lot of ground to cover. Um, but, uh, so waking up early and, and having to be competent, able mm -hmm. to drive a car, that was, that was a little bit difficult, but, um, for the most part, I, I don't, you know, there were no negatives. I, I overdid it on barbecue, but I mean, that's like, oh. it's like complaining about having too much money. Right. I mean, who's going to know, who's man. gonna like, feel sorry for you that I think if I had one complaint, that would have been it. It would have been like, it would have been the food because <laughs> when you first get on the trip, you're just like, okay, we can find these places that we can go to eat. And then the realization of, Oh crap, we have to get to like this point by X time means, well, I guess we're going to Starbucks, like, or I guess we're going to McDonald's or I guess we're going here. And I <laughs> We were, it was, I think one of our first stops at, we were in uh, Silver Sport Transmission in, in um, Rockford, Tennessee. And we were going there and we had stopped at a McDonald's and our paramedic, a gentleman by the name of Jeff Burris, he got, do you, do you remember that he got biscuits and gravy oh, from McDonald's? Jeff, yeah. Well, okay. And I was like, so, what are you doing? Whenever you're on a road trip, you start like people fall into certain categories and there's always one person who just like, 
can never order something decent on the menu. <laughs> Are you okay there, buddy? <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking back to it. Yeah, I'm just like, like oh. he, like they just like always order something gross. And he, and it, that was Jeff, man. Like he would, <laughs> he would whatever it was, whether it was like a fast food place where it's like, dude, you know this menu. Why would you go? Why would you go <laughs> offline? Or it was like some, you know, some unusual place. He just like always ordered something gross. And I was like, did you not read the description? Like that, <laughs> the description straight up says this is going to be gross. Like, yeah, <laughs> I know. like biscuits and gravy from McDonald's. And I remember because it came in like one of like a plastic McDonald's tray. And it was just, it looked, it looked so bad. <laughs> like it look it looks so bad and like i looked at it and i was like why would you do that like why would you even why would you even risk this like why would you I mean, even put this into your body you know he's a fireman he lives on the edge right like he likes the danger oh god <laughs> that that oh that i think that was that was one and then i got food poisoning one night from eating a bad muscle and that that was bad that was a rough rough night um but it's interesting when you when you do these trips and you have a kind of a crew that you're going with everybody you kind of figure out in the first week where everybody lies like we had one of our our camera guys uh Jan who is just a wonderful human being he wasn't sleeping very well he was tired so you try to kind of rally around that and you're picking him up and be like you could do it man everything's <laughs> good like you can be and he was a trooper and then you know um you, everybody's got like their own sense of humor and it was just it was really fun. Like I've been on, on shoots with crews and you're just like, I don't like that person at all. <laughs> <laughs> and on this one, it was me. Um, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it was a great team. And, uh, and it was, I hope that when we do the final cuts that people get to see, you know, they all, everybody made an appearance here or there in the videos. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, they, they could have all been starring in their own shows. They could have been starring oh, yeah. in the show. So it was pretty great. Um, how did you end up finding the truck in the first place? Um, cause you already had that done when you, yeah. you asked, you asked me to do it. You said, you know, you said you had it, had it covered. Um, you, uh, you didn't even ask me if I could drive stick, which I appreciate. You assumed that well, I, I knew did. you could drive a stick. <laughs> and, then, drive stick. and then, uh, and then you kind of surprised me with it when we got there. But so you had, you had done all of that before you even contacted me about going along. Yeah, you know, it, 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 it like the concept evolved. Like we knew, I knew I wanted to take a vehicle and modify it. Modify it. At, ugh, I can't even speak. Modify it as we went. And at first, I wanted to do an old school van. I really wanted to do like a '70s boogie van. But then I was like, well, okay. But the problem with that is, if you're if you're younger than fifty, you might not care about that because, like, I think they're cool. I have one. But they're, one, they're really tough to modify. Two, they're uh, you know, two, they're really tough to find. And I had looked at probably five or six or seven of them, and they were all just roached out rats of, of vans. And I was like, this is not going to work. So then, obviously, you go back and you you go to social media and you like, are right, what what is everybody looking at? What is a fun vehicle that people are liking? And you know, everybody is going. I oh, I like to overland and all that camping. If you're my age, whatever. Um, and so. I said, okay, well, what can we do? And we started looking at Blazers and Broncos and Suburbans. And this thing came along. And it was just, you know, like when you see something, you're like, that's it. Uh -huh. Like, that's definitely, like, I ha this is what we have to buy. And we actually found it on at one of our, our dealers, you know, on our classified section. And it was this x Forest service truck, at least we think it was, bare bones Suburban, as bare as you could get, right? Like, Vinyl floor coverings, crank windows, no AC, you know, crank rear window. I mean, as bare bones as you could get. And it was the perfect modifiable. Is that a word? It's modifiable. Sure. Sure. Okay. Why not? Uh, <laughs> the perfect <laughs> modifiable vehicle. And it was, it just seemed to, to fit the mold, right? It was like, it was, it was, it was raw. It was modern enough that we knew we could probably make it but old enough that all the modifications we did would make a difference. Yeah. I, I thought it was a really brilliant choice. You know, it wasn't, um, it wasn't a vehicle that I would have thought of like if I was shopping. Um, not that I didn't like them. I mean, I, I obviously sure. knew Suburbans existed, but I don't think I realized how kind of unchanged they were, how, 
Yeah. Like so late into the eighties. So it, cause it really had like it, it had true old school classic car feel to it. Like, you know, like yeah. you, if you took someone who had no experience at all with any kind of older car and you said, this is from 1965, they would probably be like, okay, I believe that. Right. Um, <laughs> right. But in a good way. I mean, in, in a, mm -hmm. it feels solid. It, it has like a nice shape to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, you know, and then for those of us who do know a little bit more about the development of, of like vehicle design, it had these kind of fun eighties elements yeah. to it too. I mean, the, the, just the emblems like you could like watch the evolution of like chevy's <laughs> design ethic from like the the back suburban emblem which was like super like street van 70s strip yep. to like the side you know uh chevy emblem which is like very 80s so, like blocky yeah. and like kind of um computer font and mm -hmm. so i thought that that was really fun and then after spending so much time in that truck i'm like man this is a great buy like if you were shopping for something that you needed, where you needed it to be both a fun project and actually useful, you know, yeah. so like, you know, not like a Fiat X19, which I want, by the way, right. um, <laughs> like, you know, getting one of these big trucks, totally affordable, um, very easy to work on. I mean, we did have a couple of technical problems along the way and you and yeah. I were able to Wait, fix but we them. Fixed them. Yeah, we fixed them. We and, fixed them. You know, uh, neither one of us is going to claim like, you know, master mechanic on our Ooh. resumes. So if we could fix it, you could fix it. <laughs> that, that's right. <laughs> well, I, and that was the other part. Like, you know, I think Alana and I know just enough to be dangerous, right? Like we could get in a car and things like we could diagnose stuff. I think for the most part, like this broke or that broke and we could probably fix it. And so it was actually kind of fun. Like, you know, it, it, we, we threw belts a couple of times along. I was like, oh, we could totally fix this. And we did. And it was great because if I didn't know something, Alana would jump in and she would know how to do it. And it it worked out really well. Now, if we dropped like a cylinder or something like that, <laughs> probably not so much. Uh, but I think with with the way that the truck was set up, it, it, it just worked really well. And I like you said, I think we had a lot of luck involved, which was good. Um, but the other part was I... Like, I'll be honest with you. Like, I got the truck home and it's been in my warehouse and it's sitting there and I, I need a little break. Like, sometimes you just got to distance yourself. But what you realize about those old Suburbans is that, one, they are just massive inside. I mean, you could put every – they're massive. And where the new Suburbans are nice, they're so cluttered with, like, interior body cladding and paneling and the big seats and everything. This thing fit everything. And you want to <laughs> talk about just a usable – truck oh my god like it was it, like I, part of me is like well i should probably have one of those i don't know what i use it for <laughs> but like i just feel like it's a good vehicle to have around the house if that makes any sense you know yeah well no it was great and i mean um one thing that was super funny that came up during our drive was all you know everybody who likes a suburban came out to kind of chime in on our social media yeah. or send us notes or whatever and i discovered that there is this uh epic philosophical battle in suburban oh. land which is tailgate or barn door which is better and i'm on i'm on the less popular side i believe the tailgate is better oh wait so barn door people like barn doors yeah more people like barn doors um oh i that's insane that, yeah really yeah so the argument and i can see it is that barn doors look cooler um like out out the back and then uh, that it's easier to get stuff in and out of the truck. A lot of people are anti the roll down window in order to open the, uh, the tailgate. Um, and then people who had the power window, I guess there's a power window option in the back. Yeah. Those people are very against it because I, I guess they broke a lot. But um, we had no problem with the roll down window. Plus, we found it entertaining every single time we did it. And we did it multiple times a day. So it wasn't like, oh, oh I'm tired of this. I mean, I'm sure like you've got like a strong arm now from doing it, but um. Well, that and the window crank, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Well, luckily they were the other the other arm. <laughs> it bounces um, all out. <laughs> but yeah, so like ro the roll down window, people don't like, and then they don't like having to lift stuff over the tailgate. But I like the tailgate because first of all, you have just this gorgeous uninterrupted view out the back window. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is a nice truck to drive. It's huge, 
Yep. And like, I backed that truck into spots that I wouldn't be comfortable, like backing a new oh, challenger yeah. into. It was right. so easy. And then um, the other thing I liked about it that we took much advantage of is you basically have a picnic table anywhere you go. And a seat. It's great. Yeah, it was awesome. We spent probably as much time just kind of sitting on or around the tailgate in the back of the mm -hmm. Suburban as we did inside it or, or at, at the front. So I, uh, I was... I'm very pro tailgate, but you know, I'm, I'm willing to hear people's arguments for the barn door. I don't listen, the barn door, less visibility. They're a pain in the ass as far as I'm concerned, because they don't, they never swing like they swing open, but then they, there's no catches. So they always kind of move around too much. I have three tailgated vehicles and they are great. And the fact <laughs> that manufacturers right now do not, I mean, aside, of, unless you're buying a pickup truck. And even now, if you're buying a pickup truck, you got tailgates that split apart and do all sorts of funky stuff. Like a traditional tailgate that just flops down, that you could sit on, uses a picnic table, that you could stand on to get stuff on your roof and off your roof is just fantastic. And why SUV manufacturers do not do that anymore is beyond me. Like, I don't think, do you know of any that has a, have a, have a tail? Does the new Bronco have a tailgate? Like an actual uh, tailgate? I don't know. I, I, you, you've just caught me off guard. I hadn't thought about it. Um, oh, we'll have to look it hmm. up later. Yeah, we do. Hmm. Because like, I love tailgate. I just think they're the best. So anyway, if you have a comment about a tailgate, let us know in the comments because I kind of want to know. Alana wants to know. I I know Freiburger is, is David Freiburger from Hot Rod is like dead set barn door i'm gonna to totally disagree with that but whatever um so what else would you have changed <laughs> on the suburban like if, you, if we would have kept going what other things would you have added to it all right so as you might have seen alana's background has changed that's because technology kind of just said stop so we did and now we're back <laughs> and like you know we were, we were told we were having this debate about a tailgate versus barn doors on us on a suburban or i guess any relatively large truck um you are pro tailgate. I am pro tailgate, right? Um, as far as the barn door thing, I can't, I just can't get on board with it. I just can't do I, it. I mean, I'm not opposed to a barn door. Like, it's not like if somebody was like, here, I got you a present. It's a suburban with barn doors. I wouldn't be like, take it back. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, uh, <okay. laughs> but for the, the kind of usage that I would want a suburban for, I feel like the tailgate suits my needs more. Mm -hmm. No, I totally agree with that. So let me ask you this. If you could, if you could do other modifications to big green to the suburban, what would it have been? What, what else would you have added or subtracted from it or to make Oof. it like you're perfect? Okay. All right. Well, let's, I mean, so I'm kind of a big block person. <laughs> okay. And that was a small block truck. Um, so I think if it was my truck, I'm not saying it needs a big block by any means. I'm not saying that. Oh no, it needed, it needed some but stuff. I, I would have enjoyed, you know, telling people that it was a big block truck. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so maybe I would have done that um, more, like more immediately, like something that I think that it actually does need it. We, I would have liked to do seats. Um, yeah. You know, I think that that doesn't get, thought about a lot. Sometimes people will put a seat cover on, but they won't redo the, the stuffing inside. Yes. And in particular, when you were in the driver's seat, I think that you were kind of getting some back pain and stuff from, from sort of sinking in. And, uh, and I could have used like a little more support because I could barely put the clutch in clutch. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and like shift at the same time just for being short. Like, and I was sort of sinking in a little bit too. So I think that redoing the seats would have been um, high on my list. And then the number one uh, performance thing that we didn't do that would how, that the, the truck really did need was suspension. Um, yeah. It didn't totally. seem like it needed it. Like it sat fine. It didn't look like yeah. it was sagging or anything like that. But uh, it had almost no travel. Like if you hit a pothole, you felt it. And like you should not oh, yeah. feel anything in a truck like that. Like you should no. be able to like drive over someone's house and then later be like, yeah. oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't yeah. I didn't even realize you were there. You know? Right. So, um, <laughs> So I think that suspension uh, in the truck would have been, you know, primo and maybe in the future would be primo for 
for whoever ends up buying it if they want to take it off road or drive over people's houses. Yeah, well, I think, and that's so. And here's the thing: like, so for those that don't know, you might have seen it online or not. Like, you will actually have a chance to buy this thing um, because we are going to do a bunch of stuff to it, which might include some suspension stuff before it goes up. But when it comes down to SEMA, we we actually did this in conjunction with SEMA Cares. And and for those that don't know what SEMA Cares is, it's an organization that really kind of benefits children and kind of help helps them out through different. Um, uh, childhood oriented organization. So this is going to be auctioned off at SEMA. So big green is going to be auctioned off at SEMA. Um, it goes for a great cause. I promise you by the time we get there, the truck will be perfect. I mean, it, it's already <laughs> great. It'll be, it'll be better by the time it comes around. So obviously oh. we're not going to let anybody take a, like a subpar truck. So. <laughs> it is not so far, even as it is, you know, suspension is cheap. I'm like literally talking springs and shocks. It's not like, yeah, and that's, I think falling apart. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's all it needs really is springs and shocks because like the springs, it was interesting as we were rolling, like we peek under this thing and you you guys, again, you have to remember this was 100% untested. Like we just got in and we're just like, of course we'll go 3,700 miles and it'll be fine. The springs were arcing in the other direction, like on the front. I don't know if you noticed that, but the fronts were basically straight with like that little bit of an arc going backwards. And I was like, well, that can't be right. Like, that's not good. <laughs> you know? So yeah, we have to address that. Um, I could totally see that with like an old school 454 in it. Right? right? I mean, you know, it's uh, especially because, you know, if you're doing fuel injection anyway, you can kind of adjust, um, you can adjust the tuning of the fuel injection and then you could mm -hmm. probably get the same mileage with a, with a big block as you're getting with a small block. Like, Yeah. Well, this thing needed... You know, we, we have heads in a cam that we're going to put on this thing, uh, courtesy of a AFR, which is Airflow Research down in Los Angeles. So that'll wake it up somewhat. That should give it at least another 100 horsepower. Um, but it's all in all, it's a, it really is a good truck. And it, 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 it was really a lot of fun to pull in places with something that was completely different. Where And I think there were, there were a bunch of hotels that we had stayed in where there were others like brand new or newer suburbans and we parked the, you know, big green right next to them. And you could see the difference, just that evolutionary factor that Alana was, was, was mentioning earlier about like, there's just something really raw and cool and just, I don't know, just burly about this thing. I, I, I <laughs> it really was liked. totally burly. I felt so tough. Like the times that I was driving it, <laughs> Like I would see like big truckers or whatever, look over and kind of like do like a little double take, you know, like especially if like I was mid shift or whatever. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, and I'd be like, yeah, what's up fellow trucker? Um, what's up? <laughs> what, when do we want to meet up and talk about big truck stuff? Uh, and every time we stopped at gas stations, someone always came over to look at the truck, you know, yeah. like whether it was a, a like local sheriff who was filling up or it was somebody else who was on a road trip mm -hmm. or at one point we met this guy who had this like very cool Japanese van yeah, that was yeah. also on a road trip. And like, yep. he was super stoked on our truck and we were super stoked on his. And yeah. it was just like fun, fun bonding stuff. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the other part about a road trip. And, you know, we had talked about this at length, like you, you come across some just amazing individuals that you would, you just not going to meet on a plane. Right. You, you get to see things that you would never, ordinarily see we went what was the town that we went to out of kingman that you had found oh um yeah uh it's the the ghost town on the other yeah. side of the of uh route 66 um oh gosh i'm just totally blanking Oatman. on it yeah open yeah open so yeah. alana finds this town and she's like it's on it's off route 66 we have to go up this squiggly road down through this canyon and then you pop up in this town called open and i was like okay and then we started driving there and it was, the scenery was just unbelievable. It was, we pulled up on this ridge and it was like, it was just one of those things that you look at and you're like, I can't believe this exists. And like the only <laughs> way you're ever going to see it is by going off that beaten path. And then, you know, we drove to this little town called Oatman and it was, it was just really, really cool. And it's the type of stuff that, um, man, it, if you never did a road trip before, this is the type of stuff that, that will make you want to do it. Um, I think the key is time. 
I think that's one, right? Because there would have been, if we had more time, because, I mean, you know, three weeks, you'd think that's plenty of time. <laughs> it's never enough time, especially when you're you're filming, you're always rushing. But man, there were there was stuff that Alana had found that I would have loved to have gone and seen. We just didn't have the time to do it, you know? So, I mean, I definitely came away from this trip with like, you know, some some thoughts on like how to have a perfect road trip. Like if you had three things that you would tell somebody to like prioritize in planning a road trip, you know, what, what three things would you tell, tell somebody to do? Oh man, I think time is one. Make sure you can get as much time as you want. So you can, you can stop whenever you wanted and you could just be like, what is that? Let's turn around and go find out because how many, how many junkyards did we see? How many things did we mm -hmm. roll by that you were like, Oh, I wish we could stop there. And we just, we just couldn't because we were on somewhat of a schedule. Um, you know, two, yes, doing it in an older vehicle is great. Make sure that vehicle is sorted. If you do it, like the reliability <laughs> factor is, is a big thing. You do not want to be on the side of the road being like, what was that sound? And what does that stink? And what is that like puddle underneath our, whatever it is. Oh, um, sorry. That was me. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> Right. We didn't have any accidents. We didn't have any accidents. But everybody was good. Everybody was really good. Thank God. Although there were some really close calls. <laughs> that was you and the muscle, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, man, three. Uh, man, I don't know what the third would be. I guess it would be, I mean, food. <laughs> Just because like, that's like, it, it was hard Sometimes it was hard going to like crack a barrel. Like uh, they, they, I couldn't eat another fried thing. <laughs> when we had gotten back to Los Angeles, we went out and we had found this sushi restaurant. And it was just, I don't know. Maybe it was just because it was raw and it wasn't fried. <laughs> maybe that's why it was so good. I think the food, what, what, were, your, what were your top three takeaways? Um, well, I mean, they're kind of related to yours. Uh, one is I think that 300 miles is the maximum that you can do and stop. Yeah. Because you want to yeah. give your, Again. like you want to, yeah. Like you want to look at where you're planning to go and you like might look at it and you'd be like, oh, that's like, that's only like six hours of driving. That's not that much. We can stop. But like six hours of driving is a lot. It's and, a lot. Um, and really you want maybe four to five hours of driving and two to three hours of stopping option. Because yeah. every time you stop, even if it's just a gas stop or, you know, like a bathroom break, 20, you know, minutes. 20 minutes. And if you're going to stop for, for food, which I very much recommend you do, because a lot mm -hmm. of times there's something really neat along the way, then that's an hour. And so you, if you don't leave that space in your planning, then um, you either end up getting into town after dark, which kind of takes some of the fun out of it, or you you like see something that you would like to stop at but you're already like stressed out about how far behind yeah. you are and so you can't stop so that so I think 300 miles is the max um yeah. that I would do if, if you're planning to stop a lot obviously I can do a lot more than that but right. but if you're if you're doing this for fun um the next thing I would say is that uh if you don't already know how to read a map <laughs> uh do some mm -hmm. map practice because a lot of the things that we found were because <laughs> it was a group well, effort, you <laughs> but they were because I could pull up the map and look at our route and say, oh, I can see that there's a road that parallels the highway mm -hmm. and I can understand that it's probably another 50 or 60 miles longer. Yeah. Um, and like, and then you can kind of like put that into your route planning and then get off of the highway because it it seems like it should be so easy to just like pop off and take a yeah take a, a side road but you actually need to find those on the map because a lot of them don't go anywhere or they like go radically out of your way uh, mm -hmm. route 66 obviously is very popular partially because it does intersect back and forth with the main highway so it's very easy to do parts of it and then yeah. do some highway so you can make some time and, and then get back off but there are other roads like that uh, you know and if you like look and you see like a big green area on the map like that's mm -hmm. probably some sort of state park so there's probably something yeah. pretty there there's usually some kind of scenic you know 
loop that you could do. So if you have mm -hmm. that sort of time and you, you're enjoying the driving, you, you can kind of look at those places on the map and be like, all right, let's get off here and, and do that. Yeah. Um, and then I would, oh gosh, only one more. I have so many, but um, <laughs> I would, uh, I'd also suggest um, uh, having, having tools. I mean, the fact that we had tools in the truck made our lives a lot easier when we ended yeah. up needing them. Um, you know, cause it's like, it would suck to just need a screwdriver or in our case, a pry bar and not yeah. have one like that, yeah. like, like, man, you know, like yeah. you, you know how to fix the thing and you just can't do it. Um, so having a toolkit, you know, your basic tools and, and a big, a big pry bar, I think is, yeah. <laughs> is worthwhile. I mean, if you're in a new car, maybe you don't need that. So if you're in a new car, then my suggestion would be to download, um, Roadside America or Atlas Obscura, yeah. or there are a bunch of different apps that help you find stuff along the way. If uh, if you don't already have a large notebook full of places you want to see, um, yeah. not that I do or anything. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I mean that, but I mean to Alana's point, I, when we were trying to figure out how to go, we were in Texas and trying to take the southern route or the northern route. And Alana looked on the map and she was like, we need to, and I forget what it was. This is so bad. Like, I'm like, take this route. I don't even know what it was. I want to say it was like 287 or whatever mm -hmm. it was going up. But she was like, let's take this route. It's going to take us, to, you know, on a different way. And then it'll, it'll sync up, you know, up by, I think it was Albuquerque or Amarillo. Um, but whatever the case, it was so much nicer. Then And I had taken kind of the Southern route a year ago when I took my Trans Am back from Texas, but it was just so much nicer. It was pleasant. The The stops that we did were great. It was um, visually, it was beautiful. I mean, we just hit, kind of hit it at the right time of year. We're oh man, yeah, it was so road. pretty. And it was just, it was great. So do that. Like, listen to what Alana said and like, <laughs> like find a map and do that yeah. because it really, really was a wonderful thing. Um but otherwise, I think I'm just happy that it was a success. A success, yeah, a success. I'm tired. You could tell I'm tired. A lot of knows I'm tired because, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, but it was a success. And the truck made it all the way back, which was great. We did some great, great upgrades to it, which everybody is going to see in the series Road to Improvement that we did. Um, and now we just have to start thinking about season two. Yeah, what, uh, having done this vehicle, what would be your dream vehicle to do for the next time? And what would be your dream area to do it in? Uh, I think next time I'd like to do something a little more performance oriented, not like upgrading stuff. Like, I mean, I would, I would like to do something eighties and nineties because I still really like that even early two thousands, but I'd like to do more for kind of power and handling. So mm -hmm. I would like to do something that's, you know, suspension and brakes and wheels and tires and, you know, a, possibly, you know, a power adder, like more of a, a blower or a turbo or something like that. So I guess what I'm trying to say is something sports cars with two doors and we just need two vans to carry all our junk. Maybe like a fourth gen Camaro or like. Yes. Um, yes. Like some some kind of F body, I feel like. F or like, is. yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Or maybe like a like a more base level Porsche. There's. Yeah. Oh, totally. You're good. So mm -hmm. then you'd need you'd need a route that had a lot of twisties in it. So maybe like Northern California or um, Virginia, but not like the other area, like where we mm -hmm. we kind of skipped it, but like where Tail of the Dragon is, maybe. Yeah, but again, mm -hmm. we have to do. We see, we have to keep it to that that max three hundred mile rule. Yeah. Because that, uh, we because the first <laughs> the, the first the first day first day I screwed up. See, this is this was bad because we had an incident that you'll see the first day, and we didn't leave our one place until five o'clock at night, and we had to drive six hundred miles, leaving at five o'clock at night. You were a real champ about it. Uh, that was that was that was not okay. So the I, be I the best thing I could do to help was just not sleep. The entire time, uh, but I, I, I would have been suffering if I'd been in your driver's seat by that point. So I don't, uh, I don't have that stamina. That, that was that was a rough one, but we did it. We did it. We so sure I would get. Can we keep it down? We keep it to 250, 300 miles a day. Spec out the mods, find another good car, and then 
just have another great adventure. That's what I want to do. How's that? I think it'd be good. It'd be good. Um, yeah. I, I could imagine doing it like just in Utah with like a, some kind of four by four too. That'd be good. One. Okay. <laughs> okay. We can do, <laughs> no, we can do the four by four. That's fine with me. That's, that's no problem. But like all um, dirt, like we just like all of our driving is dirt. Oh, like straight up. <laughs> No pavement whatsoever. Yeah, to get dirt, to our dirt. different places. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That means I mean, I just, I feel like it wasn't place. hard enough. <laughs> what? <laughs> you are a glutton for punishment. Dear God. Okay. Sure. Off road. No problem. Okay. <laughs> no problem at all. Um, all right. Well, this was, this was great. Um, so, what is, what's next? What are you working on now at, at C and D? What, What's the deal? What, what are we going to look for? Aside from uh, the Hemming series that's coming up later <laughs> this year, where are we going to see you? What should people look for? What do you want to Well, about? I mean, I'm in a magazine, so if you don't currently have a subscription, I very much would appreciate you getting one. That would be great. You can see mm -hmm. me every month. Um, obviously, Car and Driver updates the website every single day, so there's news stories up there. And mm -hmm. I am looking forward to getting to do some comparisons. I have a comparison, I have a, comparison a little bit later this week. Um, okay. and I'm excited about it because I get to work with all these people who know a whole bunch about these cars. So I'll get to learn a bunch of stuff. Um, and then it's summer and it looks like there's going to be events. So I'm really looking forward to kind of having some of those adventures, uh, out at events. I went to a car show. Well, the first car show I'd gone to in ages was at the end of our trip when we went to Donut yeah. Derelicts and mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed it so much that I went, I woke up early on my own. What? And I... <laughs> I know it's crazy. And uh, I went to the auto conduct car show in downtown LA. I borrowed a 1984 Volkswagen GTI and it was a hatchback show. And uh, I was very popular. I felt very cool. And it was a lot of fun. <laughs> totally the opposite vehicle from the suburban, right. <laughs> but, a, but a very similar year. Um, and, uh, and so I really enjoyed going to that car show. So I want to do some more of that, meet some more people, see what they're building. Wonderful. Okay, Alana, thank you so much for, for coming on and reliving in a very short amount of time, 3,700 <laughs> miles that we spent together on the road. Um, everybody, like, look for uh, Road to Improve It, myself and Alana, coming in the next three, four, five months, whatever. You're going to see it before, so you might promise you that. And, uh, yeah, that's what I got. <laughs>